<laughs> welcome back. Welcome back to Greenbox Gaming Plays Delta Green Impossible Landscapes. My name is Joe. I will be your handler for this operation. And I am joined by three of the most cooperative <laughs> and professional people I've ever known. Uh, <laughs> starting, of course, with uh, Jean oh, playing Benedict. I'm so humbled to be first. I, hello. Hi. It's good to see you. Yeah. And of and of course Dace playing Benji. Boner fest. <laughs> okay. And uh and again, last for the second time in a row, know, on purpose, I... Brad playing Hank. This is bullshit. You can read into that whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Does your mom know about John in all seriousness? Does your mom know about John? <laughs> like that he exists? Yes. Uh yeah. so just some, like I just want to be acknowledged in this world. <laughs> for for those of you who weren't a part of our pre-episode <laughs> bullshit, which is all of you, uh, <laughs> my parents were leaving, and I was saying goodbye to them. Uh, they were visiting, <laughs> and they said, my mom said, well, tell Dace and Brad hello, oh, <laughs> but she didn't mention John. Oh, Joe, this is why you were giving that shit-eating smile. It's because you were, you're guilty. <laughs> you're guilty. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. I'm yeah. sorry. The thing is, the weird thing was, Joe didn't even get up from his desk. He didn't even look away from his monitor. His mom gave him a peck on the cheek, and his head just gave the slightest little tilt. <laughs> so he just kept Thanks, staring mom. at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing he is, is not, just like not everyone's mom can be as um, as supportive and uh, you know, and actually listen to our no, podcast these, like Dace's mom. These are empty words. She no longer listens. Oh. Oh yeah, I haven't said it in a while, no, but hey, she's mom. Done. Empty words. <laughs> I hope you're nope. caught she's still up. listening. She's no longer listening. She has better things to do. What? True. What? Did, where did we lose her? Do you know oh, what it yeah, was? Don't blame her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know where the drop off yeah. was. That would be some what good customer said? discovery, though. Um, to for, what twas said to offend her? Why? Well, what, was um, it, what was it that that released really, all of it? <laughs> yeah. I have no comment on this, <laughs> yeah. other than hi, mom. <laughs> if you if you deign to listen again, um. So last time, the last three episodes, our banter has been kind of video game oriented, and I got one more. I got one more for you guys. Okay, all right. All right. Be locked and loaded. Is there anything that you're actually looking forward to in the video game world that's coming out? Is there something that you are hopeful or or even if you're pretty sure that you're going to get burned by it, but you're still hopeful, uh, which is... Does fully immersive tactile VR porn count? Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> he also just gave like an anime piece while he said that. <laughs> oh, Dace, this is why we can't take you anywhere. Uh, this is... It's that kind of yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no is the answer. But it doesn't count. You have to pick something may else. May actually burn you. So just I'd, I'd be a late adopter of that technology. <laughs> From a professional perspective, there is risk of fire. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Well, you know, I uh, you know, there was a period of time uh, in my life where uh, I worked at a hospital. I was a pathology tech. And oh, no, it's the stuff up the butt. I've seen a lot of the stuff up the butt. Isn't it? I've seen a lot of things that have been removed from people's bodies. Um, and mm -hmm. you know, I feel like that's where we're going with the immersive VR experience. Is right. Uh, we're already in that situation. We're just going to get even further the in. The good news pun intended. is that we're going um, <laughs> to get better at it. <laughs> Are we? We should. I, I picture Dace uh, Don't creating his it. blood bloodless character. With mods in this new <laughs> VR porn, he just has two battle axes. <laughs> That's psychotic. What am I doing with the axes? Am I? <laughs> That's terrible. That's some seven shit. Okay. That's some. That's you. Kevin you did it. Not me. You said the move. <laughs> How dare you? Okay. Well, okay. Actually, but okay. On this point. On this point. So deviating from the original Joe, question. Joe tries what to is, wrangle us back. Uh, yeah, as I try to raise his finger. What game do you think would actually be? done well in vr like a game that was not done in it originally but like would actually be really really good and i give the same answer <laughs> for, for skyrim I mean, <laughs> obviously skyrim i think they did it's always they did skyrim. a vr version of skyrim yeah i think you can yeah. do it 
but that must be exhausting. Hey, um, have y'all seen? Oh, so I know um, John has a lot of experience or some experience with VR. Uh, have y'all played VR? I've not. All? Just uh, okay at Robert's house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> which. But I'm not gonna Why are you there. laughing so hard? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not gonna go can we not it. talk about this on the yeah. podcast? <laughs> okay. Well, like I, um, I, I I'm the, concerned that I would be um, that I would get seasick. No, you will. Yeah. Um, it's not good from, enough yet because I like I'm pretty good about motion sickness, but when I was there was one time like when I was um, actually when I was in the army, and when I was looking at. Okay, when you're in a tank and you're in the gunner's seat and you're looking at this thing called the there's a there's like a, it's not the actual sight but it's like a wide vision periscope. lens that you can look through. Sure, you're looking at the periscope. You're you, when you dive, 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 <laughs> like in your tank. Um, those are North Korean tanks that have periscopes. <laughs> um, but like like if you're looking, there's this like thing called we call the fishbowl. And if I look at if, when I'm in that position, I was only in that position during training. But uh, when I was in that position and we were moving, I would get really seasick. Mm. Um, no, you so I, I wonder get, if I would get seasick from VR. Anybody gets seasick in VR at the moment because you have a heater on your face okay. and it's really choppy. <laughs> so even at like really good frame rates, it's I, a little weird. But that's maybe I think, that's just me. Probably the no, I, I don't, I don't okay. get that. Like I played. I don't get it either. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but I but, think the coolest thing uh, for me would be like some like space flight simulator mm. like elite dangerous would be dope mm. no, dude in also VR. done what about dead space done in VR. <laughs> no not dead space dead space no. would be yeah, dope I'm, no fuck. dead space <laughs> too scary <laughs> but i was gonna say the biggest restriction uh to vr for me is like you know you have to calibrate like a a box that you're playing in mm-hmm. and you can't go past the perimeter of the box right and but but I was watching a video the other day and like in certain, I don't know, I guess like arcades, they have these rigs set up that like hold you by mm-hmm. the waist. Oh, and you wear and socks. Then, you you wear socks and it's like a really slick surface that you can basically yeah, walk yeah. on. Yeah. 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 It, it's like you're fully mobile and immersed and like I super want to do that. So, it's so fun. And then so, Disney came out with those floor mats. Yeah. I don't know right. how well they were. Yeah. So this walking, this this rig you're talking about, the military huh. has had those for simulations training no, sure. for decades. Yeah. That makes sense. Like, and I, I never actually saw someone use them, but they were always, whenever we went into simulation, um, they had them for dismounted infantry. And that's why um, the best Beat Saber players in the world are from the military. <laughs> <laughs> Little known fact. <laughs> on the mat, right? That takes on a really that's a really dark term when you consider all the all the first person view VR drone warfare that's going <laughs> yeah. on right yeah. now. Oh, <laughs> it's just yeah. people playing Beat Saber. <laughs> Man, I was thinking about that the other day. About how the military uses literal video game controllers for controlling right. drone strikes. Dude, when that happened, like, like when they did that, when they're like, we're going to start using Xbox controllers for our drones or for equipment, like there was this huge uproar from like, it wasn't a huge uproar, but there was this a bit of a bit of an uproar from like the older generation of military people who were like, why can't they just learn to use the military yeah. thing? But like it was like it makes total they sense. already know how to use yeah. it. Like you have like these yeah. young people coming in. Like it makes total yeah. sense. Yeah. So you support drone strikes. Okay. All right. That's yeah. uh, <laughs> veering a little off course. <laughs> We're not doing this. <laughs> military military force can be used and misused. That's that is no. as can that video is a, games. It is a good a, statement. On a, as can and games. VR. On a different note, it is wild to me how the two driving forces of technology are military and yeah. porn. And not in that order. <laughs> are they? Or are you just saying that? No, it's true. I mean, it's mostly true. I, I said it. I said it. Confident. <laughs> okay. So it must be true. Okay. They're, and, they're, and it's like the thing is, is the peripheral devices that they're supporting the development of, they're different. They're different <laughs> devices, but... Same origins, though. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're, they're from Aliens Area 51. Exactly. exactly. Like, they're, uh-huh. it's all, like, uh, <laughs> reverse engineered okay. VR. Im- important thing, if you do go and get to have a chance on some VR, go and play Half-Life Alex. That is worthwhile. Just uh, yeah. see it there I that brain. Good, it is actually. phenomenal. It is, like, six. I have actually old. never played any of the Half-Life stuff. Um, it is one of those. It was one of those uh, kind of classic PC gaming things yeah, that yeah. I was probably yeah. a little bit young when it first came out, mm-hmm. and I just never swung back around to it. I remember seeing Half Life Two advertising like the game Half-Life magazine, 2, man. but I've never played mm-hmm. it either. Yeah, I don't know if it's... it'll hold up. Does it hold up? Wait, you've never played it? Uh uh-uh. uh yeah, It's worth playing. Uh, it's yeah. phenomenal. Really? Really? Yeah. Not, I mean, the graphics probably don't hold up, but the the right. gameplay uh, is yep. just. I mean, am I crazy or no, isn't one it of the, widely one known of the best, as like as first been first like one, one of the best video games? What? Well, I thought it was just like so like uh, is a classic because of how what it was at the time. That's what I'm no, saying. It but holds if it still up, holds up. No, it holds it's up. a perfect mix of like uh, first person shooter and puzzles and, and like uh, uh, yeah, chase yeah. missions and storytelling. Yeah. It's it's mm-hmm. it's. Yeah, yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah, I, I know it's... I mean, it's not Skyrim, <laughs> but, you know. Well, I know it's highly regarded, right? And I think that's... And that's not that's not for nothing. And again, like, yeah, it's like, you know, even you look at Skyrim now, I don't know, like, you can get some mods that can beef up Skyrim to the point where it's, like, absolutely just gorgeous beyond what anyone ever thought it could be. Um, but it's like, yeah, things are going to have restrictions or are not going to be as strong graphically as maybe they could have been or, you know, what they appear to be at the time. But... I mean, didn't Portal come from Half Life? Mm-hmm. Like, isn't that like the same engine and the same writers yeah, same and stuff source, like that? Name. And Portal was, yeah, and Portal was known for being that was extremely good. I've played through a little bit of the first one. That was one big experiment in doing tutorials. Like, that's what Portal started with. Like, they started with some cool it's uh, tutorial <laughs> shit. It's just one. It's a masterclass in making a tutorial for puzzle solving. It's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, we had a John and I had a good time playing <laughs> yeah. Portal when he was in Memphis. Yeah, yeah. co-op, time. co-op Portal. It's a really like fun co-op play. Yeah, yeah, it's super fun. Well, speaking of uh, of cooperative problem solving with your friends, uh, you guys in the uh, in our good our big old game of Impossible Landscape just reached out <laughs> to another friend have, to uh, to solve some problems. I'm reserving space for John's questions. John's water bottle is blurred before out. My, uh, Sorry, before my... Before... <laughs> it looks like a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say my piece. I have questions after the recap, okay? <laughs> All right, last time. Oh, pause Last credit. time... Um, <laughs> there is no editing. Uh, last time, uh, the crew was... Moving up to Chicago to investigate some of the stuff about Bond Richter, uh, sorry, Victor Carell, and this this kind of what you guys assume to be a bit of a Delta Green cover up of something that happened up in Chicago. Um, you guys made your way and you got pulled over by some cops that were fake cops, and I'm gonna let you know that didn't have to go that way. Um, the whole throwing the um, I mean, to be honest, like, so if, let's say Benji would have unloaded on these guys with the AK, right? From the back of the van, right? You would have destroyed their cop car. You would have left a, you would have left a shot up cop car on the side of the road. That would have been a problem. Let's say you had a 10 round long shootout. Well, people definitely would have seen that, right? People driving by, right? Cause you literally had one round <laughs> before a car drove by. Mm-hmm. But the fact that just the way things worked out and the way you guys came up to do with it, and this is, you know, I, and you guys saw me roll the, roll the luck rolls, roll the amount of rounds that you had and stuff like that. It just turned out the way it was. You guys managed to gun these guys down and throw them in the back of this cop car or the back of the van. Fucking bros. Like, yeah. It's it's Bunch it's probably one of the most competent things this team has ever done. It's because they're men. How dare you? <laughs> you know men. I'm right. Yeah, it's because they're men. <laughs> you look me in the face and you tell me I'm wrong. We are a very competent group. Okay, Joe? Of course. And But then the question came up, well, holy shit, what do we do? And Dace, uh, being the, uh, the metagaming min-maxer that we all know he is. Uh, <laughs> That's me. That's him said, hey, let, we should find a green box. And then I think it was 
Brad slash Hank that actually said, what about what if we contact one of these demons? Whoever said it. Um, it's probably that and guy you guys are, that your mom doesn't know about. Yeah, I didn't say that. Right, that guy. Uh, I don't think she knows your name no. either, so we'll just call you That's that. Uh, but, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> but you guys decide to reach out. And what a what better... Uh, demon to reach out to than uh, than Fergus, a uh, demon that is uh, shown as being a, a knight with a long beard on a pale horse carrying a sharp weapon. What what a per- with a hoary head. What a hoary head. head, which apparently <laughs> means gray. <laughs> apparently, but you guys decided to do that, and right as we left off, you heard the voice—a voice that here. You probably are unfamiliar with it now. The voice of none other than Axel Armstrong. I will. Says, I will roll. I will roll for recognition ooh, on that shit. Just stay where you are. Uh, I'll be right there. A uh, question: Is the payphone you're speaking on on speakerphone? <laughs> we're all. On the, we're, we're always on. Speaker phone. We're all on the phone. <laughs> always booth, with our ear up to the phone. Because we. So you want to tell me? We met Axel. You want to tell me that you guys all have your ear? You're all s- crammed in this phone <laughs> Same booth. One. Look, I realize why you're doing this. Uh huh. And yes, yeah. <laughs> I down. realize that we're about to roll a sanity check, but we're always on speakerphone. <laughs> you know that about us. I don't think you're all. I think but, Benji should roll to see if he recognizes the voice. Because we met him in the middle of the desert, and we got a whole bunch of guns, and we made friends with him. Yeah, you did. Okay. Um, no, I'm not in the phone booth. Uh, I'm not yeah, in the phone booth in, phone in all reality. <laughs> okay. Oh, now y'all are back. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking cowards. <laughs> you cowards. So, wait, I had a question earlier. I was going to ask. Uh, yeah, I go. Didn't, I didn't bring it up, but last time I was wondering why... We, Axel didn't stop us when we're being chased by Delta Green or the program. Well, why why did these two nameless meat bags stop us instead of somebody who, according to the storyline, was pursuing us? I still have I, my doubts that, that he's out. actual. I have my doubts that he's actually a demon or or this specific demon. He must certainly. Be. You he's he certain. Well, I guess because these were like magic coins that you found and just yeah, like put in. Rolled for sanity. Yeah, I guess why pennies. else? <laughs> yeah, true. that's not exactly so, what you rolled sanity <laughs> on. Uh, um, up until we, that, well, I had like some theory that Axel, you know, uh, I don't know all the details about it, but Joe's mentioned where there's like two sects of DG at this point. Yeah, and he was like, yeah. and he's on a, in- another sect that was, I think they're more prone to just like try to destroy you know any uh weird shit than the which would be the old school right um that would be that would be delta green yeah, proper the outlaws, outlaws rather than the outlaws. and i had a theory he might be with them for whatever yeah, there's reason, but... there's the outlaws and there's the program um in the modern but, day do our characters know that Probably you not. guys are so you guys originally Okay, this is this is where you guys are pretty good about this, so I don't really worry about that. Those of those who are listening as well, this might be a, a bit interesting for you as well. In 1995, when this started, there was no program. There was only the outlaws. That was it. That was DG. That was Delta Green. Period. End of story. After 9-11, the program was established, and they basically broke ranks with the outlaws into two groups. The outlaws, who are very much destroy it all, it can't be trusted. They're very much old school spy craft. They're the ones with green boxes and shit, right? That's the outlaws. And then mm-hmm. there's the program, and the program is like, okay, we're going to control this stuff, but we're we're going to try to suppress the unnatural, but we're also going to try to utilize it. And that's very anti-old school Delta Green, right? Who did we meet And with? that's the split. Who did we meet with at the airport? Who did you meet with? Oh, Man, that's, that's a, a good question. That seems that's very question. organization Shit. to me. Because when I think of organization, I think people like in higher up government positions. I don't know if we can you know. know. I feel like. Re- but remember, you were actually met in 2007. Marcus pulled you back in. This was in the in-between. 
between 1995 and 2015, you guys were brought in by Marcus and told, hey, hey there's this other thing going on. Mm-hmm. If you get contacted, you need to know that they're not us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That actually really clears things up for me. Really? How so? Never mind. <laughs> okay. False alarm. Never mind. Never mind. I'm never not. Mind. Never, mind. <laughs> never mind. I'm. I'm very pregnant. Pause. <laughs> nope. Never mind. I'm still lost. <laughs> so close. Uh, That's so close. <laughs> so close. <laughs> work through some things <laughs> but yeah um well and, and that's the thing it's like and that's the kind of stuff when we do a debrief and like we really kind of lay stuff out like that's the kind of stuff i'd love to talk to mm. you about no i am the king in yellow <laughs> that's right you dace um jo- yes <laughs> me the human person not benji i am the king in yellow <laughs> don't you see don't you see it's it's me have you it's seen it it's me <laughs> have you seen it have you seen joe you've put us in a hard position now like in in yeah, in this scenario, because now we're gonna have to disconnect the fact that we know Axel may be hunting us down as 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 players, but then as the people in the game, we yeah, don't know I that. feel like we would uh, I well, feel here, like we would wait on them. Yeah, so so here's the to. thing. We here's what you did. To. You guys made a call. Benji made a call. You guys and Benji comes back to the van. He's like, "Hey guys, I talked to a demon. Everything's gonna be <laughs> yeah. okay." And <laughs> and but you guys do are aware that Delta Green is hunting you. You you know that, right? You, well, you don't know that Axel yeah. is a part of Delta Green. So well, now we do. Okay. No, we not, we can't be sure. You no, you don't know if he <laughs> is or know. if he isn't. Um. So, I as Benji will just interact with axel as if um the last time we talked was in vegas yeah out in the desert yeah. in the mini all right that'd be the last uh, time you saw him yeah burning while we're so we're still friendly yep oh yep. man this is you this is a this challenge is a great twist. this is the meta challenge yeah. this is a great twist well done so yeah 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 we're de- i think we're definitely gonna wait on there's we no reason to. why we would not trust the vo- but while we're waiting can uh I get into this and start do a little search on the cop car. Yeah. Uh, like while Benji's on the phone, Hank's at search in the cop car. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and give me, go ahead and give me that. And this would definitely be a search roll. This would not be alertness. So go ahead and give that to Damn me. Damn failure. 65. Um, yeah, it's you. I would have given you a 20% on that because you probably have plenty of time. It's not like you're really, strapped for time sitting here um yeah yeah but it, it still would have failed so you you look through you don't find anything particular i would say one of the big things that you do find hank as a law enforcement officer i'll go ahead and give this to you um because of your background but also because your criminology skill like the the radios like the setup in the cop car this is obviously a car that you think was probably an older it's like it's not like a because uh, this is 2015. It's not like a, an Explorer or something. It's a little bit of an older, like SUV type cop car. Uh, this and it's got like 300,000 miles on it. You think this was probably an old cop car that was sold at auction, like this. And this happens all the time. The governments sell off old, you know, the government sells off old cop cars and old, you know, equipment and stuff like that. And even the like the radio that's stuck in it is like a civilian style kind of like uh like a a pretty complicated pretty advanced cb radio and there's actually like a police scanner just sitting on top of it and plugged Mm -hmm. into the uh and like plugged into the cigarette lighter um this is not an actual police setup 100 percent, which you already kind of knew that um but i will also give you one thing for free uh beyond that in the back there is a bag and as you open this, you there this this is only one thing, which is uh, this is something we've talked about previously. Uh, this is a bag of disappearing. Mm. Uh, it has only what looks one? like some sur- <laughs> they, they have the one. It's like a small duffel bag. It has zip ties and duct tape. Okay, and and like Damn. it looks like syringes. Like all in a little bag and stuff like this. Like that's handy. This is a bag of disappearing. This is a 
John's got a good point. There are three of us and only one bag. <laughs> There's plenty in there for all three. But not like a body uh, bag. It's more disappearing. It's not a body bag. No, no. Gotcha. This is a Hank this is will, a kidnap somebody bag. Yeah. So Hank will take that uh and throw it in the van. Just on top of the bodies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, for us to use that makes maybe sense. later yeah. if we need. What what kind so of situation just, are we with the the attendant? Is there an attendant? Is there a little shop? Oh, the camera. This is this is like very small convenience store. Um, I would say this is pretty rural. Let me roll a let me roll a dice here real quick. Uh, that's a fifty one. There are some cameras. Shit. Um, okay. You're not you don't know if they go off anywhere or anything. Like if it's all centralized, if it's like a, a, a CCTV, so like all there, or if it goes elsewhere. There are a few cameras. They seem to be the only semi modern amenity in this little kind of middle of the nowhere gas station. Okay. Um, is there anything else? This is not the kind of place that a family on vacation stops if they have an option for another place. Okay. Uh, this is. Like a, we need gas now, or God, I'm starving, or something. And they have a, like a little hot box, very small place, you know. Is there anything out of the ordinary? Hot dogs on rollers. <laughs> anything out of the ordinary? Yeah. Um, we'll go ahead and roll the that learnness roll. Well, what's wrong with the hot dogs? Would an occult? Are they safe to eat? I'm, I'm thinking extra weird out of the ordinary. Or was that still? No, roll alertness. 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 Okay. It's a 53. That's another over failure. 51. Okay. Um, let me look at something real, real quick. Da, 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 da. Because I'm real, I'm, I'm interested here. Let me, I'm going to go to Google Maps. I'm going to look at Boston to Chicago. Let's look at the map. Where do, where do you actually, I'm actually interested because I, I want to give this as much of a real world flavor as possible. I'm actually kind of interested in where you actually come through. Um, let's see. Yeah, because you have to come all the way through Indiana. That's right. Okay, yeah, you guys are, like, right on the suburbs. So we'll actually say you guys are in Indiana as opposed to uh, Illinois because I don't know my own geography of my own nation. Um, you guys are near... Now, what What does an Indiana accent sound like versus an Illinois accent? I I have no idea. I have no idea what either sounds like. We are getting like. way into the weeds right now. So my alertness <laughs> we are the weeds. has put us in Indiana. So your alertness has failed. <laughs> okay. Yes, you're in. You, you guys, your alertness is like, oh shit, we're actually oh, in Indiana, not this Illinois, is the this whole time. Uh, <laughs> no, fuck. The fuck. <laughs> wrong state entirely. Um, you guys, you look around. You 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 don't see anything interesting. Um, there are a few. There's like a, you know, there's like a trucker is like pumping his stuff full of gas and you guys have pulled over here to the side and to be honest you guys look like cops like you know you have your like I don't know you got are you guys wearing your you're not wearing your FBI windbreakers probably not but you have do you have your badges on your on your hips yeah I think so especially after that incident well, and you now have a cop car. You have a this like SUV, this old, older SUV that just has state police in the side of it. And you're with a, an unmarked white van. Mm-hmm. It's a very police looking thing, right? Like most people would look at that. If I saw that someplace, I'd be like, "Well, those are obviously cops." Did you say um, there was a so it's like you might get like there was a trucker giving some gas, getting some gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll say there's like a someone like a uh, I think Benedict is those big go dairy to. tankers. Wait. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, we do have hello. to figure out the Indiana accent, so this is smart. Hello there. Uh, can Hi, I- I'm a trucker. I'm not from here. <laughs> um, <That's>, you're <laughs> immediately suspicious. Get on the bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's like he sees you. He sees you come up. He sees you have a pistol on your hip and you have a badge from, on your hip. He's from like, around uh, you. Uh, no, officer, I'm not. All right. It's very good. Um, I'm a tr- I'm a trucker. I travel a lot, <laughs> drive a lot. 
and uh, I'm wondering where this is going. I'm really busy. I gotta, I gotta go. Okay, we we gotta take the story elsewhere. Well, have a good day and uh, be safe. Hey, hey, what's your name, brother? <laughs> he gives you the finger and gets in his fucking truck and leaves. Oh, All right. Joe's not rolling as with these this punches. is happening. <laughs> As uh, as this shenanigans is happening, we fade out of this scene with Benji going, "Hey, what's your name?" <laughs> as this as this trucker drives off and hangs a finger out the out the window, um, we fade out of this and onto that black unmarked sedan uh, from the back this time instead of from the front. We see that in the back seat this. Uh, this female agent who was with um, who was with Axel before you see her she's taking off her blood stained kind of blazer top and button up shirt she's taking it off and looking like and putting on a like a plain like dark colored like navy t-shirt fresh out of a bag right uh, she's like in the back seat like changing like putting it on and she, and right before she does that, she reaches up and turns the rearview mirror up so that Axel like can't look at her. Um, and he, but he is not paying attention at all. He has a phone up to his ear. Stay where you are. I'm coming to you. Click as he hang, hangs up the. Uh, oh, what? I don't even have a chance to talk to him. No, no, he he hung, he. Hung, no, we're past that. <laughs> Okay. He hangs up the flip phone and he sticks it in his pocket, and she's like, and she says as she's pulling this shirt on, and she's like pushing her bloody clothes down to a, a trash bag. She's like, like, was that was that the office? He's like, no, something else came up. A uh, bit of a side gig of mine. I'm gonna have to uh, leave this in your hands for a bit. Yeah, you don't mind. And she's. And she stops and she's like, what the hell are you talking? No, no, we're not done. We have to, we have so much we have to do here. Like she is like, her mind is blown. She's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Not only did we just burn down the ho, did we burn down the top floor of the boxer hotel? But now we've got a line on this construction site. We have to go clean up. No, we don't, oh, no. We, we don't have, no. Like, you can't go. And he's just like, and he literally stops. He stops the car at a red light and gets and opens the door and steps out. And she's in the back seat and just eyes wide, hands up, and just like, where the fuck are you going? And he literally just gets up and just starts walking across the street and puts his hand up and hails a cab. And the last thing we see is her just... I mean, she's cussing, just a solid stream of curses. And she says she clambers up into the front seat with her freshly, you know, put on Navy shirt and slams the door and reaches into her own back pocket and pulls out a phone and just peels out from the red light because now people are honking because the light's turning green. She throws up a, a bird to the person behind her honking as she's putting a phone to her, 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 her own phone to her ear. She's like, yeah, yeah, hey. It's me. We have a problem. And then we fade back up into your crew. As you guys are now all, now all I imagine leaning up against the side of the van, which is slowly leaking blood. Like there's like a close up camera shot of underneath the van and there's like a slow drip. That from an from an angle looks like it might be transmission fluid. It's not transmission fluid. It's blood. So Benji, As you guys are all eating uh, hot dogs from those little rolly things. Benji, what exactly? Who who did you phone? What what are we waiting for here? Well, uh, here's the thing, Benedict. I tried to call a demon, mm. and instead I got Axel. You remember mm. Axel from Vegas? Do you, did you roll that to know that that's who you were gonna get? That's who you were talking to? What? Uh, sorry. Oh, what do you to mean? actually recognize whether it was Axel. No, I don't think he rolled it. Maybe you need to roll that. You know, I'll give it to you. He's got a very distinct I, voice. I'll give it to you. Pretty memorable to character you. in this entire saga. That's, that's... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> if he led with that. Yeah. 
You mean the guy yeah. that we got all those weapons from in Las Vegas? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, weirdest did thing. You, I don't. Did you phone him? Do you I, know his number? I've got a pretty good handle on occultic knowledge, and I thought I was calling a literal demon. And then Axel answered, so I'm not real sure what's going on here. Hmm. He said, uh, stay where you are, I'm coming to you. Did you get uh, the impression that he might have been hunting us? <laughs> <laughs> you for fucking, while. you disgusting um, metagamer. Let, let, let me roll for metagaming. I have a 59 in that. Uh, I hope. So he's helped us in the past. I got a failure. He's, <laughs> he's helped you in the 65 past. 65 under... Over 59 well, but this even metagaming. but this even leads you. But it's interesting because as you uh, with your occultic knowledge, actually roll me the roll me an, an unnatural. That's something you haven't rolled yet for Benji for this particular interaction. Roll yeah, I mean, okay. I could Benji? I, it's like I don't. Know. Never mind. Let's just let's see what we get here. I, I want unnatural. I'm like Jean in reverberation. I want to give you things. Twenty twenty five. Yes. Under 28. Nice. Unnatural. Give it to us, fucking pays off. That's awesome. That's an unnatural, unnatural success. Although we don't really want unnatural. This is bad, actually. Oh, love sanity it. Sanity loss. <laughs> yeah, it is bad. Out. I love Benji, it. Benji, you know what? Go ahead and roll that sanity check. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gladly. Gladly. Um, roll in a sanity check. Da, da, da. Failure. Take one sanity damage. That tracks. All right. Uh, as you are sitting here thinking about this, you think about the fact that you ran into Axel at all. Um, this was something that Benji had actually originally kind of done through his underworld contacts. Um, remember, mm -hmm. you have a black market skill. Um, yeah. And that seems like so long ago now. But this is Axel was someone that you had kind of rustled up via that. Um, and, but when Benji when you kind of take this 30,000 foot you know kind of view of the situation you think that it really and especially with kind of Benji where his sanity is at this point in time you even think of you think of that thing that big music box contraction mm -hmm. contraption in Barbas's yeah. house and you think of it running through the story and you think of the bit where even where you saw the little you saw the little Axel pop up when you met him. Because he was a part of your story. He he was one of the little characters. But you remember, maybe just now, you remember something odd. You remember that on one side of Axel's little paper cutout was Axel, but on the other side was this armor clad demon. Mm. Holy shit. And that even the way that they, that, you know, and you kind of think, and, and as you think, you're like, there are these other creatures, these other entities. Maybe even, even when you first ran into, uh, what was her name? Uh, Malpheus. You know, it's like when you ran to Malpheus, like same thing, like on one side a human, but on the other side, this depiction of this kind of demonic, twisted figure. And you think that, Absolutely. and and as the more and more Benji thinks of it, it seems that again these are set pieces that are all in their place, called onto the stage by the director at the perfect time, to be who they need to be when they need to be. It is mm -hmm. at this time, because of this little experience that Benji is having, that Benji, you, your head is pulled back toward. The payphone, mm -hmm. which you see is now hanging off of the hook. You put it back in the hook, but now it's hanging down. And from this distance, you can barely hear that there's talking on the other side. Good. The hell? Um, Benji approaches the phone, you know, like physical glance, and slowly reaches down, picks it up. Yeah. Puts it to his ear. You hear another familiar voice. Another voice that you know, that you encountered kind of recently. You hear the voice of Timothy Bale, King Bile. Mm. You hear... What's he saying? It sounds like he's giving instructions. 
uh, you hear you, the other side of the... You, the, you can hear them talking. Whoever he's talking to, it's staticky and grainy, but he seems to respond to it. You hear him say, uh, no, 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 no. It's, uh, it's, it's in the mansion, but Lundine has to build it first. No, 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 no. Just send Asa. Send Asa. He'll do... No, 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 no. No, he collects it. I think... I think you have to drink it? I think? Yeah, yeah, from their... It's not from their eyes, but that's... That's close enough. Yeah, that... And then, like, there's, like, a car that goes by. And it's loud. The car is loud. And he pauses when the car goes by. And you hear... We're being... We're being listened to. Click. Hmm. What? Interesting. Yeah. Are you guys gonna... Biles and the mansion. That's the first mention of the mansion, yes. Um it's in the mansion. Yeah. And Who then has to build it Asa. first. And then you know they have to drink it. Well when we're in uh when we were actually in Carcosa in the uh psych ward, it was they were draining people's eyes and they were calling it something. I the forgot. Patsu. Patsu. The, what, Patsu. Yeah, yeah. The, the uh, psychologist was for whatever reason. Hmm. You have to drink it. And it makes me think, like you said, this whole play thing, it makes me think that Biles may be somewhat of the showrunner or like a stage manager, so to speak. Yeah. And he told you as much when you guys had talked to him. Oh, he did. Okay. okay. Remember, he had told you that his job was to... That everyone had plays their part, and his part is to make sure everyone meet, is on their mark. Okay. Right? Yeah. So he is like the stage manager. Hmm. Well, and maybe Hank's having this thought, and maybe you look up to the highway as a as a truck goes by. Um, and you see that the truck driver on the highway is staring right at you. And as Jesus. your eyes come up to meet him, he his eyes snap back forward. And it's like one of those big box trucks. And the truck drives forward and drives past you. But the further down it gets, so you can kind of see the back of the trailer. There is no trailer. It just has a box built up on one side. Oh, oh my God. God. Like on the side facing you. This is why I check we can't weird get, stuff. Oh, yeah. Let's go. We can't. So... And can't get away roll from this. that sanity check. <laughs> <laughs> is that where this is going? I would say yes, but Hank is uh, immune to helplessness. It's damaged so, <laughs> uh, for these purposes. At this nice. point. So, Good on you, Hank. So uh, are you guys going to stay here? Yeah, that's what I was trying to get at. I mean, I, regardless. Well, let's have that conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's have this conversation um, in character. So... Uh, fellas, I just talked to Axel, who I just had a revelation. He might be human slash demon. Uh, can we, can we trust him? What do y'all <laughs> think? Can we trust him? Well, we had <laughs> Malthus and Malthus who delivered some good weaponry for us. Uh, mm-hmm. so yeah, maybe. yeah, it was a good break. Uh, maybe all these demon folk ain't so bad. Right. Yep. It is yep. odd to say, counter, but... Uh, back in uh, Clarksdale, and... Well, I don't know. There's always positive and negatives with these folks, you know? You know, contractual type stuff. You gotta give something to get something. Uh, not always. We've got a contract with Ed, and uh, we've yet to see why... What What's gonna happen from not fulfilling that. But we did leave him our number to tell him, you know, we'll renegotiate. But we'll see. Oh, I'm sure it'll yeah, be, fine. be fine. I'm sure it will be totally fine. Everything will be good. Well, if we don't, we need some way to get rid of these bodies. That's the, I mean, if if the our experience so far, at least as far as I'm concerned, as odd as it sounds, that they've only been beneficial. <laughs> You should definitely. Honestly, I mean, 
I mean, honestly, they've been more beneficial than our handlers, anybody to do with DG. They don't give a shit. Except or for Joe. Except for Marbus. <laughs> oh, sorry, Marcus. Uh, Marbus. Marbus? Yeah, the bastard. Who is Barbus? Barbus. Barbus? Marbus Marcus. Bar true, you're right. Barbus was not suck. a nice person. <laughs> but he was also. And there's that other. Our, he was our handler, too, though. And a There's demon. that handler. Uh, I don't know how many missions y'all been on, but there's this one handler named Foil. He's a real what shit, a shit bag. <laughs> He's a fucking asshole. I don't know. You worked with him before. You would, you would not know him. <laughs> Wait a but second. I'll, I'll say <laughs> quick question. What year did the reverberations take place? In? Around this time. This year. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely about this time a up. red uh two thousand four Ford Mustang drives by on the highway. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> with a with a Louie who doesn't know what's awaiting him <laughs> heading towards Chicago. I like that. Good. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, but whatever so, we decide, we should we should decide now. We either have to bury these bodies, dump them somewhere, or decide we're gonna wait for this individual. Well, do we want to split? Uh, maybe one of us waits, and the others deal with the bodies and come back when we can. We are in the desert, right? In Indiana. Well, the whole point of the uh, no, it's not desert. It's not the desert. Um, yeah. Where are we? Um, it's just like, a, it's like forested. Where, yeah. I don't know your people's country. Hold Where up. do you bury bodies? <laughs> in this kind of well, I thought that was. Look, I know where we. I know how we do it. Where I'm. From. <laughs> I thought that was the whole point of the green box. So if we're gonna bury the bodies, then why wait around for the green box? Right. So this. So this area is like, like kind of like flat, but like pretty heavily wooded, where there's not a town. Perfect. Um, again, you guys are kind of. On the backside of nowhere, kind of like weird little... It's not like on a major highway, but like kind of like little bump in the road gas station. Um, I say we go, we deal with these bodies, two of us go, or one of us. I think I could probably do this by myself. Uh, and the other two can wait here if you want. Or, I don't know, Benji, what do you think But what's about the that? point of the green box, is what I'm saying. If we're going to dump the bodies somewhere else. Um, well, uh, uh, resources. Just general. Like. What do you okay. think? Um, uh, I just need to know uh, what you guys are going to do. My head hurts. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the green uh, boxes, are uh, they fuck. pretty much like loot drops? We, we're going to get some kind of equipment? Okay. Or is this, Not is always. A... Not always. Yeah, uh, here's, here's Okay, I've got a solution, oh. possibly. Like, out of character. I really want to see Axel again. <laughs> but I don't think we as characters would hang around, because this is some fishy shit, so... Uh, maybe, what What if we just, like, uh... leave a note and uh, tell Axel where we're going, and then go, in, go ahead and take care of these bodies somewhere in, like, the... in the Barrens... That seems, you know, yeah, well, yeah, Hank's, kinda... Hank sees the blood dripping from the back. He's like, yeah, maybe we don't have time to wait around on this guy. Okay. So I'm I'm down for that. Uh, let's leave a coded message at the... Uh, uh, on the phone booth. Uh, Pay phone. Yeah. 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 The cat is home, but the litter box ain't full. <laughs> Hell no. We... Uh, is, is that... Benedict is that what Pierce, we're going with? Peers over his it's... shoulder as he's writing this, be like, "Okay, Benji, I love the style, but do we need to give him any useful information?" <laughs> well, well, let, put your number under there, underneath that. Oh, all right, yeah, that's that's okay. good. All right, all right. So we'll put that on the phone you're booth. Just, you're just gonna put your number for a good time. Call. No, no, no the, the cat, cat in the litter box. Yeah. Are you guys actually doing something real to let um, <laughs> Axel know where? Classic question <laughs> of handlers everywhere. What are you guys actually doing? What are you guys actually doing? <laughs> yeah, let's leave him actual DG. Or what, whatever we know of tradecraft, leave him something Fine, yeah. that we think okay. he'll know to us. Okay, well, like, you know, like the, I, like, I mean, you might literally leave, like, a green triangle. 
you know, or like draw like a triangle on something like that's like pretty yeah. like on the nose. But at the same time, like if you're not in DG, then it, you wouldn't look specifically for it. We yes, we draw we do our phone number, but it's in the shape of a triangle and we tape it to the to the poem uh, side of the phone. And, and there's definitely okay. the cap poem. It's important. OK, risky, but I like it. And then, yeah, so let's try to find guys... a wooded And area. then we could say, we could say, we could say for whatever his demon name was. Farkas. 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 Burry. 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 Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's go around. Let's drive around this podunk town and see if there's a, a heavily wooded area we think we can bury some bodies. You're taking yeah, that the is, that is car? definitely... Not a problem. You're taking the cop car? So do Say we again? do we have like an artificial yeah, yeah. police escort at this point with the jam you do. and the car? Yeah. Seems to be. That's great. Yes. Um yeah, you guys are I'm gonna say that you guys are probably a little bit you probably are probably east of Angola, Indiana. Um on I ninety. Um but you can definitely find your way off the beaten path. Um Kind of out into the middle of like a, some wooded areas. Oh, there are some. Wooded. There are some. There's some lakes. It's it's pretty damn wooded. Uh, where where there's not farm fields, it's wooded. I'm going to so, go yeah. to Long Lake. Long Lake. Uh, I'm not going to find that on my. It's not very populated, um, and I believe. That. Well, you know, you guys are in 2015. You would literally have this on your phones yes. and be able to look this up. Yes. Yeah. So we go there and uh, weigh him down, strip him, strip him naked, weigh him down, make him sleep with the fishes. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not Benedict, a bad way to manage it. Benedict remembers this area because he just rolled an intelligence roll and he believes he's been here before. Okay. That you know of a remote A nice area. remote area, super quiet. He went and had yeah. cocktails with his brother out here for sunset. Sure. <laughs> okay, you. so you guys, what is the plan? You guys are literally going to take them out to a lake and try to weigh them down with cinder blocks or something? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Hank, stop by Home Depot, uh, pick up some cinder does. blocks, mm-hmm. and then also some C-clamps. So here's how... <laughs> All right. Be careful what you say next. Uh, That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> hypothetically. Not that I've done it in the past, but if I were to have done it, right, I would put slip cinder blocks around their limbs and then clamp them onto would, the. Would Benji, <laughs> as he says, notice. with the put the lotion on its skin lighting. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that like you could you guys this is um this is not a a terribly technical thing. You know, you've got some pretty smart people here. You know, whether you're using ratchet straps or rope or chain or C clamps or whatever you're doing, like you can and you know, it wouldn't be that weird to go by a Home Depot and for, to buy a whole bunch of cinder blocks. Like that's not that odd. Cool. And, uh, and she slips a cinder block I think, over their arms and then takes a drill and fucking screws through <laughs> their forearms and right. puts a lag bolt okay. in. All right. A tennis all right, all right. That holds this <laughs> cinder block on. And he. <laughs> um, Hank will search. No, that's, that's I think I also want to search Hank. their bodies before we dump them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we got a bunch of time, so. Oh, we should absolutely take their uniforms. Success. Their uniforms are riddled with bullet holes and blood. <laughs> yeah, Benji, uh, we well, can't do anything. Uh, is with it that. close to Halloween? We could have costumes. Ooh, I saw a cut. fumble on my is, search. Is that a f- 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 fumble on a search? What does that on mean? a search? I, I, your retina detaches. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't really know what a fumble on a search would mean. Like, I always want to punish you for fumbles, but. It's like with a search, I. I think well, it'll be fine for now. I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out later. But That's, Hank got a success. But Hank got a success. Hank, you, you are. We'll say that you guys have gone by like a local hardware store. You know, again, kind of out here in the middle of nowhere, and you have 
gotten some cinder blocks and stuff. You've gotten what you need to take these guys out to a a lake. You know, and again, you kind of had this kind of pseudo police escort kind of looking thing. Um, and while this is maybe happening, maybe Benedict, uh, you're driving, uh, and Hank is in the back. Hank, or you guys kind of get out here in the middle of the woods in a non populated area, and Hank is opening this stuff up and looking at these guys. You reach in one of the shirt pockets of one of these, these quote unquote police officers, and you pull out a, there's a, a little notepad that has uh, the description of your van. Um, it has the license plate. It says three occupants. It has descriptions of all three of you. It has the time that you crossed the state line, and it is perfect. It is, wow. ex- like, huh. looking back, like, you think this is exactly when you crossed the state line of Indiana. Um, Hank shows everybody, he's like, this is kind of eerie. That's not good. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think we have a tracker? I appreciate that sanity check. Thank you. Do you think we have a tracker but on then, the car? The last thing that you see mm-hmm. is you see an address. You see an address for, I mean, you don't really know what it is, but you see that it says, uh, arrest and take here. <laughs> so they um, weren't Do we recognize that handwriting? Ooh. Ooh, that's a good question. Do you recognize the handwriting? If you ask that question, you still have Marbus's or Dr. Barbus's. You still have his copy of the Ars Goetia, don't you? Ooh. I believe you do. Uh, I have the Ars Goetia tattooed on my body. <laughs> I thought you had had his copy at some point. I'm gonna say you have yes, it. Yes, we do. For these purposes, yes. <laughs> uh, you, it, because you said that, Dace, as Benji, you you pull out this taped together version of the Ars Goetia that Mar- that Barbus had had, and in the margins mm-hmm. all around around this thing, you had seen many notes, but there were two hands. One of them, you're almost certain, is Barbus. This was the hand of the invitation you received originally um, and stuff like that. The other one is an unknown hand, an unknown handwriting. And these notes match that other set of handwriting in Barbus's Ars Goetia. Is that from the exemplar that we originally got, the handwriting exemplar? That is Barbus's. Okay, I'm with you. Handwriting is the example. So this matches the unknown person's handwriting. This matches the unknown person's. Yes. It's got to be the director, right? Or he was in cahoots with the girl that was digging a hole mm. under her house as well. Could be. But she's um, dead now, right? She got dealt with. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, she was dealt with, all right. Mega um, It's got to be the director or the stage manager. Okay. Because they instructed the cops to arrest us at such and such time. So where is that location? Yeah, it does seem like there was a supernatural element to it if they know the exact time that we we're crossing. Definitely. But Definitely. also, it's kind of like... Uh, their whole stance has been kind of like ever let us do our own thing, you know, without too much direction. So that seems odd. That they Are were... we doing our own thing? Mm. Right. But that's the Ooh. question. So like that begs the question, why would they want to kidnap us? Because it's kind of like so that, this grand... so that we play, kill Brad. the two police officers so that we then come out to this area so that we find this note. Come on, keep up. I don't think I don't think it's their style to do that. No. I think it's like yeah. I'm not sure who this is. Something else. I'm not sure. Uh, so do we have that location? We've effectively got the place where we were going to get kidnapped to. Yeah, you have the place where it looks like these quote unquote cops. We're going to take you. It's also worth noting these guys have no identification on them whatsoever. Like it's like even even the tags on their clothes have been removed. Um, there is. I think I know it's what the fumble. Mm-hmm. The fumble's going to be um, Benedict is going to drop his ID card accidentally in one of the oh. bodies. 
Oh no. <laughs> That's I love a good self nerf. <laughs> Where is I, it? I, I think I think that I think that I think that the fumble is going to be that there's nothing else you find on their bodies. That yeah. there might have been some other stuff, but that stuff yeah. is now gone. That maybe you dump them, you know, kind of preemptively. Okay. How close is the address? We're going to say it's within about probably a thirty minute drive from where you guys are now, and we're going to say it's 18 September. It's a Friday. And we're going to say by this time it's probably it's probably getting close to dark. Uh, we're gonna say it's probably about five o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. A little, little, ch- getting a little chilly right. here in the evening. So we should get rid of Hank, these guys. Benedict. Well, yeah, no, that's already done. Okay. Them, them dudes are uh, sleeping with the fishes. Yeah. So we got this address. I'm thinking, what if we ambush the ambushees? We're, we're the ambushees. Wait, wait, what? Ah, uh, I phrased that wrong, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Language is fluid. It's it's uh, descriptive, I, not prescriptive. I think I get you. As long as you I understand what I'm I trying get to you say, good, buddy. We go investigate. That means language is these people at the ambush location. Yep. I'm Face not opposed. The joint, see what's going on? I'm not opposed to we that. We got a fire power. It's on the way, especially since it's so close. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just right over there. Yeah, look, thirty minute drive. Look, it's right there. <laughs> we get a we get a, a, a couple burgers on the way. Right, make a night of it. It's Friday. Oh, and how far away? Let's from turn up Chicago. So, so we're here. in Indiana. We're in Indiana. Okay. Yeah, you're still in Indiana. Okay. Um, for those who aren't, let's make a road trip American, of it. How far is that? Uh, you're probably for those who are American. <laughs> how, <far is> <laughs> how far is it from you from Chicago? Still, yeah. it's you're probably a good long way. Still, probably like another like probably five to eight hours. Okay, yeah. Then uh, I'm definitely down for this because I mean we're not coming back to this area, but it will be risky, and they know what we're driving. So maybe they were just going to take us to a nice hotel, and we could get some rest. So we should definitely investigate. Right, and if we show up in the cop car. Maybe they don't even know who the cops look like. Mm. Did you guys? Oh, well, they know who we look uh, like. Driving the van <laughs> and just like trailing behind, like five minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Park the cop car. All right. That person gets out. Okay. Yeah. I don't. We can figure it out on the fly. Yeah. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. <laughs> um. Actually, real quick. Hold on. But y'all Let's saying y'all, you want to get some rest first? Stop. stop. Yeah, let's stop here, at, you know, around this town and get some rest probably before. Oh, you want to do that first. Okay. <laughs> okay. I want to go there and figure out who is there. And like, we have we have the advantage here. We can we can camp oh. out. We can observe. Oh, we can case the joint. Question. We can see so, what's going on. Like we have if we guns. Gamble. We this, have surprise we... on our side. We don't know. If okay. they Joe's know smiling, and I don't like it. With I just had this idea know. of you guys like sense, on your maybe? bellies uh, observing through binoculars. Do we want to? And then just like beside you, like what are we looking at? Like it's just it's just Axel. Yes. Okay, so oh. y'all want to go there now? Let's do it. Yeah. All right, Fine. let's go there. Fine. But does anybody actually know what we look like? Because nobody has yet been able to recognize us. No, we've, we're on the news, but every single but time I thought we've about gone that, places, yeah. nobody's really recognized us or... <laughs> ah, the Wookiee yeah, trick. Yeah, the old Wookiee trick. Yeah. Is it just you? Uh... But the thing is, they probably know who they're going after, right. so they probably know what we look like. All right, let's so not I don't think they we'll get it. Let's go. That, they had descriptions the of us. Location. We just found that. So. Oh, yeah. Drop location. Oh. I. Pretty. Is di- we were on the news. Disguise? Dis- is disguise? Disguise is a skill? Us? It was me, I think, or something like that. Yeah, 
my face was blurred out in the camera. Yeah. You in the car? Yeah. Okay. The address that you guys get is, I mean, the gas station was a gas station kind of in the middle of nowhere, but just a long stretch of highway. The lake that you chose for the secluded location to dump these bodies was in a secluded location. The place that this address is taking you is the secluded of the secluded. I mean, it's like it gets to the point where it doesn't even appear that there's any farm fields out here. I mean, it's Indiana. It's almost nothing but farms. But you get out to this place and you're able to kind of drive by it. And it seems to be a place that has like an old cattle um, kind of a gate across it, but the gate is open. And you see that down the end of a long drive, it's like a long like gravel road off of the main highway is something that is completely and utterly out of place. It is a big square gray building with the words stenciled across the front state police. No insignias, mm. only an American flag flying out front and probably okay. two of these very similar kind of cars pulled out in front of it. And that's what you can kind of see from like the road. Mm. Yeah. So what is your intent? Oh, man. How far is it from the road? We could hike it pretty yeah, easily. You, you could yeah. hike it. I mean, you, and again, it's like it's like in the middle of a big open field, not a farm, but just like in a big open field with nothing in it. Um, you think that they're, I mean, and you guys legitimately have like some weapons and stuff that have some pretty powerful scopes. I mean, you could probably mm-hmm. find a way to observe this place from afar. If that's that your would intent. be uh, my vote, yeah, would be to let's try to hike it, get some equipment and hike uh, close enough. If we drive up with a cause, they're going to know someone's there. Can we just look through the scope yep, from here? Definitely. Can we see anything through the scope? Can Benedict look through the scope and kind of. You could. I, I imagine. I imagine you. You hold up the rifle between the front two seats, yes. <laughs> like, and you're like, you're like looking Awkward. out the windshield. Yeah. You you're able to see. This is a powerful scope, and you're able to see that the place looks like it has its lights on uh, inside. Like you can see lights, <coughs> and roll and alertness. Tell me, me what Sorry. you get. Uh, That's you, Roland Lordness, please. Yes, if you're the one doing this. Success, nine under fifty-one for once. Nice. You see, you see the head of someone sitting at not just their head, uh, like not they're not decapitated. He loads uh, the chamber. Like you see, instinctively. <laughs> yeah. You see, you see the head of someone sitting at the desk, and they have a like a police kind of style ball cap on. And but you're watching, and you kind of pay attention to this person. They're they're very very still, like extremely still. What the fuck? And the longer you look, you're not sure this is a person at all. You think this might be some kind of dummy. In mm. fact, you think this might be some kind of mannequin. Oh. Mm-hmm. oh okay. Mm. Here we go. Dressed up as a police officer, is, sitting very, very still. This is not a good place, guys. That's a mannequin. <laughs> There's a, a mannequin place, there. Uh, I don't think this is a real drop. I, I'm a little scared. Maybe we should just move on and not open this can of worms. I don't know what this is gonna hold for us. Yeah, if it's a mannequin, we can deduce it's not like some sector. Delta Green or some no. government agency. It does seem to be a supernatural a bit of a element. Supernatural thing, and I don't like the idea of being controlled. I ain't no puppet. Hey, uh, can I get that uh, that sanity check for uh, Benedict, please? Damn it! Thought he'd forget. <laughs> uh, that's a failure. Take one sanity damage, please. I think we just move yeah. on. Let's move on from this mm. place. I don't like it one bit. We have no reason. Hell no. We have no reason to be here. <laughs> Benji, you sit your ass down. We don't need to be here. We have a mission. We need to get... That was... We need to get... Like, Benedict is scared at this point, and he doesn't want to fucking kick open 
the hornet's nest again. Benedict, look, this is the mission. What is the mission? What exactly is the mission, Benji? You say this is this is unnatural? I That's what you said, right? Yes. What is an unnatural thing doing in the physical real world? This needs to be contained. That is according to those what if somebody else stumbles upon That's this? That's their business. What if a civilian comes you, here? You see a school bus unload and a load of children <laughs> on the end of the road, and they that begin to happily... Watch, <laughs> yeah, watch that school. Benji gets the AK-74 and mows it down. So it's, it's for your uh, own good. Benji, I see your point. It's like nighttime now. But <laughs> counterpoint, this is no longer... Delta Green business. We are not stopping any incursion. We are surviving. We're getting to the bottom of this and we went we want to stop this. Stop it for us. That's my mission. My mission is to get the shit ended so that we can carry on with our lives. All right. Well, we you can get this shit ended. The only way we can do that is to go to the very top. We got to get to Carcosa and cut the snake's head All off. Right. If you every single if you truly believe <laughs> that this is going to be one of the top instead of the hotel, this weird staged mannequin nightmare trap that we were going to get ambushed into, then I'll follow you, buddy. But otherwise, we got business in 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 Boston, in wherever the fuck we're going. Yeah, we're going to interview some fucking theater kid. That's what we're going there for. He's right? dead. The theater kid's dead. Um, oh, well, it's going to be a tough <laughs> interview. <laughs> well, the whole point, if I may interject, the whole point, break it up, you two. The whole point to go to Chicago <laughs> was to find this, Some we need some entryway to get to this hotel. And this is obviously part of the place. Uh, let's just camp out a little bit longer and see what happens. Okay. Can you, can you uh, agree to that, Benedict? I, I agree with this. I'm sorry, I got heated up. This is just, I, I don't want to do this again. We've had so many close calls. I want to live through this. Hold my hand. I will. He holds it. He Kiss me. It's so clammy. <laughs> Why are you so clammy? <laughs> oh, your hand's so uh, wet. Um, there uh, is... While we wait, can Hank take a a look at this? Through no, the it's mine. Sniper scope. Get your own. <laughs> Benedict slaps your hand. <laughs> Benedict is, is cracking. You hey hey, look look at me, Benedict. What? Look at me. What? Look at me. Benedict puts his shoulders, so much and shit, hands Benji. on Benedict's shoulders. I know, and there's so much more shit to go through, but it's gonna be all right. We got each other, right? And Hank, gonna be all right. Don't we touch got me, this. Hank. You look through the scope. <laughs> you look Don't at the building. Me. It's got like Benedict's hand yes. in one hand and, and like Benji patting uh, him on the head. <laughs> so I'm gonna roll We're a search. So good at interaction. Or alertness. Really a search or an alertness? I'll do Let's alertness. See how you do. Success twenty under seventy seven. Hank, you are you're taking a little bit more of a wider view, kind of you, you do see the mannequin sitting there. Except when you look, the mannequin's head is up and looking directly at you. Oh god. Jesus. And he rolls for sanity that and you stole my gun. You quickly move away from that. You quickly move away from that, because that's weird. <laughs> and you are surprised there is something that you're very surprised to see. Coming around the building, and you think that maybe while you guys were having this confab and actually walking down, and it's probably like I'd probably say like a hundred meters worth, you know, of like kind of well, probably more than that, probably like a hundred, two hundred meters of uh, of like gravel road to this big building that's out here. You see, walking up the road toward you, crunching on the gravel, are five figures. Oh, shit. Each of them coats? is wearing a long oiled trench coat. Oh, nice. And each of them is wearing gas masks. Two of them are wearing what looks like old school, like World War II, Vietnam era army helmets snapped underneath their chin by the chin straps. Looks like they have a mixture of shotguns, 
and M1 carbines. Again, these old school kind of weapons. And they are crunch, crunch, crunching down. And just, they seem to be scanning. They seem to be scanning all around. Maybe there's a line of trees up one side of the road. And they're just kind of be kind of scanning as they go. They don't seem to have a particular place in mind. And they just look NPCs. like they're very much. <laughs> It's like it's like when you run upon the Thalmar, the Thalmor in a uh, Skyrim yeah. who are taking mm-hmm. the prisoner, yes. and they're just on their way. Yeah. <laughs> but they, uh, well, and the funny thing is, it's not unlike that. They seem to just kind of be on their way. Uh, they're about a hundred meters away, and they're walking directly your. They're walking your direction. Um, I assume you guys aren't parked right at the entrance of the road that you're to the side a little bit or something, right? right? right, right. But they're walking down this gravel road. Hmm. Hank, what do you see? What are we doing? We're going to have to make a decision fast whether we want to try to find out more, sneak in here. There's, we, I see five trench coat gas masks wearing probably mannequins coming down our way. I don't, now, I don't think we stick around, guys. Uh, so one of the things I rolled earlier is I rolled a luck roll. I rolled two luck rolls, actually, and both of them were failures. These guys are getting to the point where they're going to be imminently close enough to probably observe you. Right. Let's run them over. Let's run them over. What are you doing? We we have to decide now. There's there's three options. I don't know how to drive. (laughs) Can one of you get in the ambulance and run them over? No, no, that was Finnegan. That's not... That's Finnegan. (laughs) That's That's not... Benji can drive. Uh, Hank, make uh, the choice, man. I don't. Has Benji drove? Yes, Benji. I'll make up. the if he took if like I got ten my, minutes to get up I have, that side road at the back of the house. Yeah, you can drive. If I have a say in it, I say we go stealthily. We move this car further down the road. We come in through the forest. We know where this area is. We have a general idea of how many people or NPCs, mannequins, whatever you want to call it here. Let's do the stealth route. All right. Because there could be something in here that gets us closer to the hotel. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Agreed. Um, so you're going to basically try to pull away and get to a different vantage point before you think these guys can see you. Come in through the yeah. woods, you know, not down the right. so, main. You, so what, you pull away in the... You have both the cop car and the van. You pull away. And who's in the cop car? Hank. I believe it's our, Hank and Benji, okay. isn't it? Well. Uh, Benji would be okay. in the van now. Uh, Benji was in the cop car to okay, search gotcha. it. Right. Cool. When we were talking. So, so he'd be in the van Hank, now. you take, uh, again, you're in like this SUV and you kind of take off, you know, to try to get some distance from this place. Benji, you pull the van out behind the police car behind a Tahoe. Can't drive, but okay. And it's, it's you've seen it on movies. It's not doesn't look too hard. Um, but <laughs> you look in the rearview mirror and you see right as you're about to pull off of, and you see the first person, the first trench coat wearing, you know, one of these patrollers stepping out onto the road, and he looks both ways and lingers just a moment toward the direction. I mean, you're like literally leaving like a cloud of dust behind you. Um, he, like his, his, his head kind of lingers that direction. And then he makes a hand motion, you know, kind of like a, a forward hand motion. And they walk across the road and into the brush, still mm-hmm. scanning, still patrolling. And, a, okay. and about that time, Benji receives a phone call. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, yep. Hello. Uh, Hank, uh, Benedict activates the radio so Hank can hear. You're on speakerphone. Uh, You're on speakerphone. <laughs> Don't say nothing that you wouldn't want somebody else to hear. We're going to say it's about 1900. It's about 7 o'clock at night at this point in time. It's starting to get pretty dark, it's, if not completely dark, by the time you guys pull up. I don't up do this. commie time. It's seven o'clock. It ain't nineteen hundred. <laughs> Commie time. <laughs> you hear the voice on the other hand. 
Just go down that road you're going on now. Gonna be a grain silo off to your left. I'm waiting. Click. Uh, what? Uh, uh, no. Nope, I've already hung up. <laughs> I made the click no. sound with my mouth, You're but still I'm still hanging up. Yeah. Nope, I'm okay. just just that no. bit and this I'm bit explaining it. The click sound. Is a click. We didn't actually hang up. That's no, crazy, man. Uh, don't you question my methods. <laughs> I. <laughs> Who's the demon here? <laughs> click. <laughs> she didn't say click again. You didn't God damn it! Still. Just get down here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hang up now. Okay, click. Shit, I just said click. Did I you hang up? up uh, okay, you hang up the oh fucking phone. Give that to me. Like, All right, almost smashes the phone. Over. <laughs> Hand it to Benedict. Over. All right. So grain silo. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and and Benji tells Hank and Benedict. Um, <laughs> he doesn't just go by himself. <laughs> no, I'm following you. <laughs> well, All right, we'll go that uh, he's way. He's behind. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just got a call from Axel. He said, uh, "Go down the road. And there's gonna be a grain silo." So, you, how do y'all feel about yeah, that? That's fine. Let's do it. Splendid. <laughs> Never felt better. Are we t- <laughs> Never felt better about it. <laughs> okay. You get down. <laughs> it's that classic point in the session where everybody's just like let's just fucking do it let's just fucking go (laughs) you go about five minutes down the road and sure enough you see an ancient looking grain silo with vines growing up the side of it several of the panels on both the top of the dome and all the way up and down uh missing uh, right next to a dilapidated building that's long fallen in on itself probably some type of grain elevator or barn you're unsure but Standing out like a bright shining beacon in a dark sky is a bright pink and yellow van. And down, it's parked at the bottom of the silo, and you see that there is a door at the bottom of the silo that is been propped open with a rock. And the van is just parked there by it. As you pull up, you do not see anyone. I'm gonna give a little hoot. Beep beep. I thought you meant literally you were gonna hang your head out the window and go, Woo! No, no not like a. <laughs> like an yeah, owl. I love your car. No, beep beep. <laughs> Flash yeah. the lights. Nothing. And it is dark. It is dark. You can just barely make out this grain silo kind of standing up in the darkness. Nothing. No response. I can watch from the car. Right. <laughs> Maybe have the headlights on the. If you two want to go in, okay. Uh, you you gonna look after um, my sniper uh, rifle for me? <laughs> I have a. Uh, well, I, I I suspect we should go in armed just in case. And uh, uh, well, Hank has a pretty. You're pretty good with guns, ain't you? Yep. I reckon. <laughs> you want me to come in? Is that what you're saying? Two people with. AK-74. Well, we don't know where there's going to be murders all committed. All right, all right. Again today. I'll come in with you, I, but I, I'll just take my heavy pistol. He saddles that up. All right, so you guys are going to ease your way in? Yeah. I like it. Go ahead and make me that alertness check, whoever's heading inside. I think we all are. We're doing like a slow-mo yeah. walk. Like real Failure. badasses. Failure. For Hank. Let's see. Successful Benedict uh, 35. And a fumble for Benji. <laughs> Alright. Um, so you guys, for those of you who Benji, you hear nothing. Uh you have um Sudden Tinnitus. What is it? Shit, I'm deaf. No, what is it what is it called? Uh what what's that song by Celine Dion? Uh the the my heart will go on. Yeah, you have a heart. Your oh, my heart will go on stuck in your head, and you just cannot get it out. Uh, <laughs> you might as well have been flashbanged. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also humming it to himself as he goes. As he's scenario. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, Hank, you ease open. Hank, are you? Is Hank going first? Who's who's going first? Yeah, that makes sense. Hank always goes first. 
from a from a game perspective because he's tell like, me what happens. Yes, Hank will go first. Benedict right, second. You reach a, you reach a hand forward and push the door open, and you see that yes, this appears to be the inside of a grain silo, but there also looks to have been a piece of tin sitting over what is now a set of stairs going down. This is not okay. a typical grain ele- elevator kind of thing. This is not typical grain silo kind of thing. And you see that down at the bottom, you see a bare, you see like a flickering fluorescent light. Mm. This might be the green box. Uh, Hank, well, if he doesn't see anything odd besides that, at a glance, he'll continue down the stairs. Benedict, you do hear the sound uh, of what sounds like someone, it, like, if you didn't know better, you'd sound like the someone maybe like shifting a little bit in like a metal folding chair or something like that kind of sound that kind of like you can just barely make it out or even the sound of someone like a deep sigh it sounds like someone might be smoking a cigarette down there he's gonna call out hello hello come on in water's fine (laughs) (laughs) that'll probably Axel is that you brother (laughs) oh yeah it is (laughs) Hank, Get on, Hank chuckles you. at that <laughs> <laughs> and continues down. Uh, yeah, we go down. We, we, we should we go have, down, right? Yes, yeah. he's our friend. Yeah, you guys make it down and <laughs> you're completely not expecting whatever is about to happen. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> you make it down and you see that down here is a is a very small room, probably 10 feet by 10 feet. Um... And sitting in the middle of it on a folding chair is none other than Axel Armstrong. His hair is tied back in a bun. His long hair, his beard is down there. And he still has, he has a, now what appears to be like, uh, cop, what would it be? Like, he has one of those like American flag bandanas. And he's wearing sunglasses inside <laughs> in this flickering fluorescent room. God and damn. sitting across his lap is what looks to be a Mac-10 with a long-ass silencer hanging off the front of it. And he just holds one hand on it as you enter in the room. Axel, you look cool as hell all the goddamn time. How do you do this? (laughs) You're just cool as hell, man. I really appreciate it. You look cool as hell all the goddamn time. (laughs) I want to let you know... Brothers, I'm glad you called me. I uh, wasn't sure how long I was going to be keeping up this charade, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, what are you saying, brother? I believe it's pronounced charade. He looks really hard at you <laughs> for a long time and doesn't say anything. I, uh, oh, this is it was in the script. I, it was in the cool script. It was misspelled on <laughs> He's a, he's he just says he stands up. He stands up kind of briskly, cigarette hanging out of his mouth. You ain't gonna be able to find me again, Benjamin Potts. You're lucky this was in your cards. Oh, wait, what are we doing here, Axel? Are we gonna be cool? Oh, yeah, we're you're cool. scaring me. I'm doing the coolest thing for you I can, brother. I'm leaving. And I'm leaving with all three of you alive. Where are you what? taking us or are we going somewhere? I'm confused. Oh, no, we're going our separate ways. I got a call from the boss man. Said you need a, a bit of a, a pick me up. He forwarded me your call. The boss man, who are you talking about? The director? The king. Oh, the, the king. Bael? Are you talking Bael. about Bael? King Bael. Okay. He's calling the shots. Interesting. So, why don't you do us a solid? <laughs> don't worry about that. Needless to say, you ain't gonna see me again. And that's all you need to know. He starts to, like, walk past you. He's like, the green box is there. Got some doohickeys for you. 
takes the he's uh he just kind of uh, he has like a bit of like a shoulder sling on the Mac on the Mac 10 he just kind of hangs it over his shoulder good luck to you Cell. you are gonna fucking need it Axel wait you, you're cool as hell but why are you he, leaving like this because if I stay any longer Benedict Benedict Farthington if I stay any longer they're gonna ask me why I didn't kill you there it is. Who is they? You're standing in a fucking green box. Figure it out. And he opens the door and steps through. You... Hey, Axel. God damn it, I made my exit. <laughs> <laughs> is there any is there any chance that uh, you hear the van crank if up. we play a, a, a different module that you'll be a guest star as a PC instead of an NPC? It depends if Joe gets to play <laughs> anytime soon. I'm leaving. <laughs> Alright, all right. make your make your grand exit. Sorry. Gosh, you hear dang, uh, that man you, is cool as hell. You hear so Guns N' Roses cool. uh, cool appetite. For, you hear Guns N' Roses appetite for destruction uh crank up on the stereo <laughs> <laughs> as you hear him as you hear gravel fly as he uh, burns rubber as you hear the van leave. That man makes me want to be well, cool. No, he actually than I am. Was assigned to kill us, but he did us a solid and why did he do that? Well, it's that answered quite a few questions. We know for sure that Delta Green's after us, trying to kill us, but um, the director I suspect, is also we, trying to get us on track. Yeah, they have the director ah. Bile has control over these demons, and they, at the flip of a switch, they could become part of the play, or go back to whoever they were in reality. It seems. As you guys right. are talking about this you're standing there still in this small room and you see that sitting on a uh what looks like there are there's like a few boxes like uh, those plastic tubs like storage tubs you see it sitting on, one, on top of one of them is a small box with a little heart on it and it just says it has a heart and underneath it says axel let's uh, open it okay benji goes That's over really and opens it, it. We're all uh, how over. much lethality damage do you think we, a claymore does? We all, what's your, we just what's your, want to get the gift. You all die. Axel. I, I trust Axel yeah. implicitly. I don't give a fuck. You open it and see what uh, what you would not, what Benji would not know as, but as maybe Benedict, but almost certainly Benedict would probably know this. He sees what he knows to be some style of Russian pistol, which is actually a CZ-75, mm. which is a 9mm pistol with a silencer attached to it and a magazine full of rounds in it. Uh, but this one has down on the side of it, down the pistol grip, it has engraved in it uh, again, good luck. You'll need it. And then another little heart, an axle. Oh, I called dibs. I call dibs. This one's mine, and he's gonna like <laughs> hold it to his chest. I want to roll. <laughs> I want to roll an occult on the pistol. Okay. It's still mine. I don't know if this is completely I'll stupid. Let you see it. I, that's fine. I've got it. You can that's look fine. at it. I just want to know if, there, if, if it's, in, it's imbued with some Benji. sort of. I need you know. to be clear. This is mine. Oh, oh man! So Wait, he added he added the pistol to the board. Is that what you said? I had a ninety-seven on a ninety. Uh, yeah, you did. That's that a failure sucks. for a cult, but I'm going to check it, and I'm going to get can. better at it. Yeah, also, and also, there's some Mirada we need to talk about, Joe. A bit of a wisdom push. Sorry. Do you want to push yeah. I mean, uh, fucking we willpower, could. not wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> would burn some willpower? I'm not going to do it for this. But you, I'm not gonna you have this, this pistol, and then... But as you're looking through this, you guys see this, and Benedict comes over and says, Dibs, and takes it from you, I guess. <laughs> Uh, whatever happens. That's why I fumbled because Benedict just snatched <laughs> it out of my hands when I was looking at it. Hank, behind the door, there is something underneath a tarp. And as these two are messing with this, I imagine Hank pulls off this sheet and you see that there is an old school CRT television VCR combo uh, set up on what looks like an oil drum. And sitting on top of it, 
there is looks to be a VHS with a hand labeled uh, note on the side of it. What's it say? It says XXX. It's porn. It says um, a song before travel. Hmm. Okay. Gotta watch that. What do you fellas think? It's Axel. He, he, we have to look at all the gifts he's left for us. In fact, like I want to go and see if there's anything else around this place. <laughs> Rummages okay, so through. Hank puts in the tape. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta watch it. We have uh, to. Hank puts in the tape. Wait, did you rewind it? Oh, you gotta uh, rewind it. It's gonna take like ten minutes. Pencil. You gotta uh, rewind shit. it. Uh, if you, if you press stop and rewind, what? so we don't see it. Stop. Yeah. Yeah, and don't press play. If you push stop. It'll rewind faster. Yeah, I know. I know. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. All right. You hit play, and it appears that this has been taped over. Um, this is this tape has been from something else has been taped over. Maybe like an old like uh, aerobics workout uh, VHS. I know it's an old Matlock VHS, <laughs> and it starts off with an episode of Matlock, uh-huh. and then it very quickly <laughs> shifts. And you see what appears to be a, uh, you see from the camera's perspective, it appears to be inside of a small auditorium. And you see a group, groups of people kind of top milling around and talking. And then you see the lights go down on this the TV. This is the tape of the Chicago Boys play. And on the screen, you see, or in front of the screen, you see a young man walk out, and he he looks frazzled. His hair is everywhere, and he's wringing his hands. But his eyes are wide, and his smile is huge. And he's like, "Thank you, thank you, everyone, for coming today. Uh, my my premiere, you know, and it's all ja- like glitchy and jaggy in the way like an old VHS is." He says, uh, "I just want to thank you for coming." And uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to present to everyone uh, my uh, a, a piece that I was inspired to create, A Song Before Travel. And there's like some vague dispersed clapping. And Benji, you see down in the front row in a wheelchair, you see the back of what you were, who you are certain is T-Model Ford. Oh mm. wow! Okay. The and you see that you know the the film begins to show and the, it's a very like kind of artsy odd piece where there's not really like specific characters like it's like it but everything about it gives all three of you the same kind of uncomfortable feeling that you got watching the clown do its dance on the stage oh, I don't like that this. everything is simultaneously symbolic but also bizarre and unwieldy and about that time you hear screaming first a woman and then multiple people Holy as shit. the wind as the camera gets like jostled around and you see three figures bolt from behind the screen, basically knock the screen down almost, and bolt across the entire uh, the entire stage where this is being filmed and dispersing out into the audience. And it's dark and you can't see them. It happens so fast. And the last thing that shows right before the camera cuts off, like camera literally falls to the side and cuts off, is you see these gas mask wearing, trench coat wearing people storm out onto the stage and begin firing into the audience. Blam! Blam! And then the the video tape goes to static. Are... Okay. Are... Are these troopers an archaic version of Delta Green and that Benedict is probably a good place to stop takes the VHS out and no, smashes it <laughs> he smashes it he smashes it oh, these, right. these troopers they come in and they assassinate a crowd of people that have seen the contaminated plague okay. are they trying to contain the situation no this is, no, this is good sanity check content is what it is <laughs> 
We should talk about this right. on the sanity check. All right, all right, nice. All right, all right, all right. Very, nice. very nice. All right. Everyone, everyone listening, everyone watching, thank you so much. We really, really appreciate your incredible patronage. I hope you enjoyed getting to see Axel again. Uh, it was starting to hurt my throat. Certainly did. Uh, doing that voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm glad we got to do it. Um, I'm also glad things are continually getting more and more bizarre with this group. Mm. Um but yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Everyone listening, everyone watching, again, thank you. If you want to support us, uh, please follow us on our socials and whatnot. Mention us to a friend. Leave us a review it's on Spotify and Apple. Uh, we actually and just recently started uploading our stuff regularly. It's gonna should be going straight to YouTube Music. Um, that's the because Google Podcast is going away, so YouTube Music is gonna be taking its place. If you consume things that way, uh, but if you really like it, want to get it a week early. Please consider going to the Patreon, throwing us three bucks a month. It really helps out and uh, helps us do this. But yeah, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Yeah. That was cool. Back at episode. you. Yeah. That was a good one. Um, it's about time. I want to give a, a <laughs> shout out to... Uh, uh, I'm trying to find their username. Oh, is this on Reddit? Yeah. Here, let me... Oh, let me fuck. let me help you. I can't with find that. the username. Uh, da, da, da. Hold on. But uh, somebody uh, specifically requested that I DM game, and I <laughs> appreciate you, and I hear you, and I tried to reply to you, but I accidentally posted on the general thread instead of your specific comment. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, because I'm a <laughs> luddite. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I. I appreciate the vote of confidence, that is prof and I wish I could find prof your username. Plum and library. All right. Yes, that is it, Professor Plum. Okay. Are you gonna? There we um, go. Uh, do it. Are you gonna answer the well, request? That uh, comment genuinely inspired me to crack open my Eberron book, um, and then I realized that there is not, in fact, a module in the back of it. It's just like suggestions for how to run <laughs> nice. the campaign. So. So but, but all it, you that, need it is really did. a Rando to say this and not your friends and family to encourage you right. to right. start <laughs> a campaign. Actually, yeah. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> well, uh, well, Professor Plum, thank you for inspiring Dace, and uh, maybe we can get, yep. Thanks for that comment. get that D&D thing it. uh, it's going. It's got my gears running. Yeah, I'm, I'm brainstorming a homebrew world. I'll get back to you in three years. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's a start. It's a start. But guys, thank you very much. Thank you for always. Thank you, you're Joe. always a. You're always. You're not okay. You're not always a pleasure to work with. <laughs> but it's always fun in the end. Uh, uh, <laughs> and Joe, you are always honest, and that's what I appreciate about you. <laughs> well, it's just so honest. All right, guys. We will catch you next time. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, as always, stay safe and stay sane. Bye. Ta-ta. Later. Adios. Thank <laughs> you.